discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, buddy boy. What you got? Oh, Drew's got some animal pictures. Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact, given that you were just giving me endless grief as we ended the show last All night. All I said was, is I never heard of that no, tripoid. No, I believe the words were, it doesn't exist, you made it up, how dare you. Taper. What is a taper? Here what is go. a taper? There Let me go. see that thing. <sighs> well, did, did, oh, T-A-P-I-R. Did, did, did I describe it properly or not? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it was a pig with a yeah. sn- snout, sort of an elephant trunk. Yeah, and I have seen eat, this animal. And when they eat, they sound like you. I think they call them something mm. else, though. What? I mean, I mean, I think I think people mistake them for something else. Mm. People? Are, are they in some family? Hey, listen, uh, what's his nose over here? The genius Liam Lynch last night. I didn't know what you're talking about either. Yeah, except I showed him the pictures afterward. Eh, I don't remember if he'd seen them. After. True, last night, like a schoolgirl. He was like, Adam, running. where are you going? I'm like, I'm going home. Oh, wait, I'm on the internet. i got to find the taper. I'm like, uh, show me tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know what I said. I just left. You didn't say anything. Oh. No. Well, maybe just, you just left. leaving. Yeah. Well, Drew, you know how it is. If I don't get out of here by 12.01 and a half, I turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. All right, so All right, this so is the go. taper. Yeah. It's, yeah. But I'll tell you, you know the thing that's, uh, now I never knew what you're talking about, but I'll tell you, when the uh, caller, or when our screener said uh, T-A-P-E-R, yeah. it was like, that, no, that doesn't exist. Yeah. And then, uh, that's from uh, Dr. Doolittle, and then when you see T- T-A-P-I-R, you go, oh, that could be something. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A one letter? Yeah. <laughs> Makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh, that's something yeah. I never heard of. E-R doesn't exist. I-R? I gotta, I gotta learn more about this exotic <laughs> animal. Well, I brought in a piece of paper, too, Drew. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. writing on it. Yeah, writing on Whoa. it. Whoa. Yeah, those are... Mr. Those Corolla, I'm impressed. Words strung together. Oh. We have no guests tonight. I was at the uh, down at the uh, Toyota, uh, Toyota Grand Prix oh, yeah. of uh, Long Beach today, taking some practice runs. Another uh, sleep-deprived... <laughs> oh, that's great. Go to bed. Run around track. Go to bed at 2, get up at 6.30. Oh, oh it's, uh-huh. it's huge. Buzz Aldrin went right into the wall, by the way. Oh, no. Yeah, destroyed his car. It was great. Uh, I get this. Uh, I guess I get it once a year. I think we did this uh, last year, but uh, we have some new affiliates, and some of you may may not have heard it or not. But uh, And it's, uh, I don't know why I do it. I, I'm not really trying to prove too big a point, but I just find it interesting. It's my uh, Social Security statement. Uh-uh. And... Uh, a lot of people in this business that don't want to divulge what they get paid for things or what they make for things, and especially in radio. Yeah. Because, believe me, if you found out how much these sea-sucking morning shows and afternoon guys were getting paid, you would hate their guts. That's the way it works. When people find out what radio guys make, they get angry. And Although re- I recall you, we were at dinner the other night, uh, hearing about what uh, someone made who basically makes commentary for about three minutes an hour. And you were outraged. I got angry. Now, mind you, it was twice what my peers make in medicine, but uh, go ahead. Oh, right. twice what your peers make in medicine, please, peers. <sighs> anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is a Social Security uh, statement that I get uh, sent once a year. I guess everyone does, True, Do you get yours? It seems like every other year. I, I never noticed any coming until a few years ago. And now well, it's you like never this, paid taxes until a few uh, years ago. Yeah. Maybe this is uh, the second or third one I've gotten, but uh, I find it very interesting. And it starts at the beginning of your, of your recorded work. For me, uh, 1980. Must have been at McDonald's in the uh, ninth, 10th grade. 1980. Your uh, tax, uh, and my to- total earnings for uh, 1980, $232. Who? Yeah. Big year. It's all right. It's all right. Still living at home. You're 14. 15. Uh, 15? Yeah. No, maybe I'm 16. 15. 15. Keeping it real. Living with a <laughs> stepmom and apathetic dad in North Hollywood. Crapping in a popcorn tin. Well, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're coming to that year. <laughs> now, 1981. Starting to move. Starting to move in the right direction. $746. Ooh, that's a huge move. It's a decent year. You break that down by month. That's uh, it's pretty good coin. Pretty good coin. Yeah, working at the Flask Liquor now. 
Delivering, well, what did you hear about uh, this job? A delivering job? booze to uh, angry, non-tipping old Jews. Great job. Great gig. Fantastic. That job must have lost five minutes. Great job. Now, 1982. Graduating high school. Going to work. What about graduating high school? Yes, I graduated high school, barely. You d- didn't... I didn't get my diploma, but I was able to graduate. Well, you left. You finished high school. No, I owed the book room money, Mm -hmm. and they wouldn't give me my diploma. Well, I'm surely that was reflected in your job, your your monetary uh, career. Well, they they said I owed them 1995 for We the People. I uh, I argued with them. They said we're holding your diploma until uh, until you give us this book money. And I said uh, I'll show you. I'll have a endless string of dead-end jobs that don't require a diploma. Yeah, that must mean that you that because you didn't have a high school diploma, your income level would be held no. at the level it was. When How you dare you? High. What, do you think? You pull out your high school diploma when you're filling out an well, application? Let's, let's see. Let's see. What happens to your career here? I'll show you. 1982? 1982? $1,093. Wow! Out on its own. Making its way. Well, no, no. I'm living in the garage. I'm mm. living in the garage. But the stepmom, stepmom's putting the heat on me now had enough of me uh, bathing off the uh, hose bib outside and uh, cramping in a popcorn tin. So it's time to head out on my own. Yeah. 1983, that's when I make my move. Okay. That's when I strike out. And it's reflecting the income. $2,289, oh, everybody. Big year. Big year. <laughs> big year. Big year. Yeah. And then, now keep in mind, everybody, not going to college and working summers. Just working. You know what occurs Just to me right now? Yeah. What does it cost the government to keep records of people making no money? Yeah, well, there must be a lot of people out there that made no money for many years. Yeah. How much does it cost us to keep those records? I should ask. Uh, I'll ask my family. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> I don't know if they would know that. But All right. Now, now, smarty pants, now I've made my move. 1984. I'm in my uh, one-bedroom apartment with the Wheeze. Wow, already. Living on Laurel Canyon. Living large. Got myself a futon that we're sharing. Nothing gay, just proud. Just, uh, you know, making ends meet. $9,367. Oh, my Dude. God. Yeah. That's, uh, that's 1984, everybody. That's pretty good cash. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, keep in mind, gas was, uh, you know, not a buck 65 a gallon back then. It was a buck 35. Yeah, so, I, I, uh, I want to remind you, too, that, time, that we, time. we talk to people every night here that have uh, <clears throat> three, three kids on that salary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 1984. 1985? Zero. <laughs> just, uh, just a zero there, <laughs> Drew. This is because you didn't file? Zero. Yeah, zero. I think... Uh, or are you taking everything <clears throat> in cash that year? I think what I didn't file. And by the way, if you wonder why the government comes snoop, snipping around, snooping around, yeah. uh, it sees a little trend like that. I think it might send up a red flag. Mm, yeah, a little zero. I think I added on my grandmother's kitchen that year. Just mm. took a year off. Need to find myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Plus... When you made $9,367 a year before, you can prove. You can afford to yeah. coast for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. All right. So, now, now here's where the move comes here, Drew. 1989. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm only up. Oh, I'm at 86. Sorry. Yeah. 1986, $17,672. Well, you were getting some skills then. That's pretty. That's when you started the carpentry and stuff, right? Yeah, I'm moving into my carpentry yeah. world now. You know, still living under the poverty line, but I got my pride. Buying, buying your own equipment, probably. Got my Mazda, Mazda pickup truck. So you're reinvesting the, in yourself as, as a business, so it's not necessarily all reflected in your Social Security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm making, yeah. I'm, make, I'm making good. Makes a pretty good coin at this point. I mean, seventeen thousand dollars. You know, that's uh, almost half as much as a school teacher. So I'm, I'm tons pretty of good. back then. <laughs> Here's the problem. There was a problem. Quite honestly, I want to be. I want to be frank. Aside for a from the money and the, and the car, I no didn't know you what they anybody. wanted. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was Adam. Adam, you know, the friendly, happy-go-lucky carpenter, or Adam. The seventeen thousand six hundred seventy oh, dollar a year them. man. I didn't know you what they wanted. Trust them. I, I cut a lot of gold diggers yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, you know what they're going for. Yeah, yeah. they want to be set up for life. Mm-hmm. Kind of bread. Still living in the. Uh, oh no! Now uh, me and the the Wee's and another buddy uh, take over a uh, like nine hundred square foot house in uh, North Hollywood at this point. Nineteen eighty seven. Look a little slide here. Two thousand five hundred fifty three dollars. <laughs> Again, and let me let me just uh, say this has uh, been out of the house for four years now. 
not uh, not going to school, didn't suffer any back injuries, didn't move back home. Just joined the working force. 1987, 2,553 dollars. 1988. Want to take a guess, Drew? Nine thousand. Zero. Zero. <laughs> There. Was one of these years the ones when you fell off the scaffolding and it couldn't work for a few days? The, no. Can we at least say that? No, it limped no. into work the next day. Oh, okay. But here we go. Right. And then Zero. we're going to take a little break and finish the rest of this off. Zero. Zero, 1988. I am an adult now. I've been living out of the house for four or five years. Zero really means you didn't file. Zero means, zero means did not file. Mm -hmm. Zero means uh, worked under the table. Yeah. Um, that sort of stuff. But... Didn't get much work under the table. Right. And uh, you want to know why I didn't have credit cards? Yeah, no social security. You see the zero there. Yeah. It's, it's hard. That's where you got to uh, do the secured bank. You know, you, you give the Bank of Hoven uh, $500. They give you $250 credit. Right. And it's like, hey, that's great. <laughs> How hard is that to do? I could give 500 bucks to, to my mom yeah. and tell her just to give me uh, 250 bucks worth of credit. All right. Uh, 1990. Six thousand three hundred and twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. We'll stop there. We'll stop there. But remind me to pick it up. Pick it up a little Rocky, bit later. Rocky, but steady few years there. It'd be more fun if Drew brought his in. You guys could compare back and forth the years. Uh. Yeah, yeah. He, Drew wouldn't do it. He's too big a coward. No, I've never seen that. You never seen it? Yeah. It looks like junk mail. A lot of people just throw yeah, it away. Throw it away yeah. Well, it's uh, it's very interesting. And I don't know, Drew. You got to read it. Yeah. I guess see what that's uh, what that's all about. Now, don't give away. No, 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 no I won't. I, don't I, look I, I, at it. It's no fun. No, I, gotta, I, I, I remember gotta tell it last you. year. I remember. You last don't year. remember every number. No, no, I don't. But I, I, let me just. Hence you. your nine thousand dollar guess on my pivotal goose egg year of 1987. Now give me that. Come on, don't make noise into the mic. Now you're going to be bored when I read you the rest of it. You ready to go? Yeah. Uh huh. Pfeiffer. Yeah. Pfeiffer's ready to. Huh? You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Um. Okay. Every single time that I make out with my boyfriend, I mean, like, he'll, like, push me off, or he won't even touch me unless he has a boner. I just want to know, is this normal? I didn't get that. What happens? He won't touch her unless he, he has a boner. Yeah, he won't maybe, even touch me. He or won't maybe it's me. just that whenever he's, you know what I mean? Maybe he always has a boner kind of thing. <laughs> well, he, do he doesn't want to make out. No, he won't even kiss me or anything. Mm -hmm. How but, old is he? 17. What How do often do you guys have sex? I've never had sex with him. What do you mean? I don't understand what you're saying. Then what? I don't, I don't understand either. Like every time, like he, he won't kiss me at all, or he won't make out with me or anything unless he has a boner. I don't, that's not well, well, that, but if he starts making out with you, he's gonna have a boner. So how can you tell which came first? I don't, I don't know. This is just this is what. Oh. How come every sixteen-year-old chick calls the show sounds like she's wearing a retainer and just bit into something sour? You know, mm -hmm. key, key, key. You know that sound, Drew? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey key. I don't know. That's why I'm... You know, like, you're, stop and really dissect that question. Every time he kisses me, he has a boner. Therefore, he wouldn't come at me unless he had one? Hey, yeah. yeah. He's, got, he's, got, he's got corneas, too, every time he yeah. kisses you. He's, he's got a lot of things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Pfeiffer. Yeah. What are you? Are you good looking or something? Not really. Okay, good. I like that answer. So, we're trying to figure out whether he gets a boner when he's kissing you. Right. I don't know. Which you is don't the, know. Which is I, I know you don't know, but th that's a... If he gets a boner when he's making out with you, then he doesn't only gum at you when he gets a boner. He gets a boner after he's made out with you. Which is normal. Or, like, or like if he loses it, then he'll, like, then he'll just want to stop. Do you're you, not, do, you're do, not do, doing anything with the guy but making out. Do, I know. That's my whole thing. I don't understand. Do you talk to him about this? Um, no, I haven't yet, and should I? I think you're misinterpreting what's going on here. I think there's something normal happening to him, and for some reason you're what reading you, yeah, why, into it. Why are you spinning this? I don't know. I just want to... What's wrong with you? He's, he's got, I mean, <clears throat> he, he seems like a decent guy. He's not forcing sex on he, you. He's into making out with you, right? Yeah. And when he does, he gets what's, a boner, which is normal. I mean, it's, hard, it's almost impossible for a guy not to. Yeah. So what's the big deal? Well, I just... Well, he'll you sound like her stop. now. Huh? <laughs> What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Oh, my God. Yeah? You want him to stop? No, he'll stop right, like, in the middle. Like, how long Hold before he stops? Blah, blah, blah. How long before he stops? Like, I don't know, like, ten minutes. Yeah, maybe that's all a, I can tolerate. It's a I mean, fair yeah. amount of tongue action there. No, 
to open about it. my yearly quota there now. <laughs> True, what do you got? Eight minutes? <laughs> Good. Hey, Pfeiffer. Yeah. Are you, are you, uh, where's your dad? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Are you yeah. a little angry at the guys or you don't trust them or something? I, I just wanted to know. Do you have any guy friends? Yeah, I have a lot of guy friends. Do you ask them? Um, no, I don't, you, I don't you, want to you're, you're not asking a question that a guy can answer. And it's not a, a question it's a, it's a we non, can answer it's, either. Right. It's a yeah. non-question. You want to know, but what you want to know, what? what why you why aren't you why having... Why do guys have boners why, when they have sex? Why aren't you having sex with a guy? Because um, I just don't want to. That's good. Okay. That's, That's good. good. That's excellent. Where's your dad? I, I honestly don't know. He left when I was two. Yeah. Okay, so, so you got, you got weird you. trust issues here with guys. Okay. Because, listen, Fiverr, this guy's not doing anything. He's making out with you for ten minutes, which is a fairly long make-out session. He's getting an erection, and then he's not forcing himself on you. Yeah, and then Just he like goes, every other teenage guy. Goes as far as he can, then he kind of gets less excited. He, he's doing, he's, he's, Runs he's, out of steam. he's a model citizen by Loveline standards. And you're trying to create some case against him, and you really, you don't have anything to go off of. So just stop building a case against him and his boner. Okay. All right, you're angry at your dad. You don't trust your dad. You were hurt by your dad. That's your dad. This yeah. guy's not your dad. Okay? All right. There Thank you. you. Yeah. I like that Pfeiffer. Yeah. She's like, all right. Yeah. I okay. Thank that. you, Mr. Crowley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little more of that would be nice. Yeah. Ariel? Ari Is it Ariel? Ariel. 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 All right. All right, who Be, cares? Yeah. Go ahead. What, what do you want? Okay, I'm Chaldean. Okay, I don't know if you know what it is. That's, yeah, it's that's kind of it's a, that's a Iraq, skin lotion, right? I'm, yeah, I'm from Iraq. Yeah, Chaldean. But I'm Catholic. Chaldean. You're Catholic. Yeah. All right. When did you come to this country? In 1983. Okay. All right. Moved to Detroit. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. My Ooh. family moved from only Iraq to Detroit. Yes. Only city in the United States worse than Iraq. Uh, Detroit. No, yeah. only city. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. It could still be a lateral move, Mariah. Detroit yeah. is a good place. All right, go ahead. Anyway, my family is very strict. Like, we're like Muslims mm -hmm. as far as our, cult like our culture, like towards women. Uh, and, mm -hmm. like, I'm supposed to have, like, an arranged marriage mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I ended up having sex when I was 20 years old. Huh, that's not bad. With a black guy. Fantastic. <laughs> That was yes. a big deal in my house. That was a big deal? Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't know I had sex with a black guy, but they knew I dated a black guy. All right. Well, we'll, they, we'll they, pay back. We'll pay back time. You, uh, you uh, declared a jihad on your... Uh, on my own family, on right. Your, on your dad. Yeah, that's great. Right. And yeah, right. they didn't like this? Did they meet this guy ever? They met him, and they didn't like him. Oh, not because I they just, had no I'm reason. feeling so sorry for this poor guy. They had no he, reason not to like him. You know what I mean? You imagine his, what he was dealing with? Yes, and I can. He, he's I probably a good him. guy. Probably was. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's he was a good guy. He still is a good guy. Yeah. Right. No, not all right. <laughs> <laughs> we have one Arab caller calls us once every five years. That's him, and he yells at me. All right. So uh, you dated the one black now, guy. So yeah. I now I dated the black guy, and I was sexually active. And you know, in my culture, we have arranged marriages. My brother got married like that. My sister, she's a year older than me. Yada yada yada. Got married. Right. right. That, right. Yeah. Yada yada yada. Anyway, it's a point in time right now. It's like, okay, my mom wants me to get married now. But uh -huh. I can't because I'm not a virgin anymore. Well, what? They, whoever they're setting you up with won't accept you if you're not a virgin? Oh, yeah. They won't accept me. And we do the whole shit, the she whole hot, bring out the sheets. Let's see what's going on. Oh, really? Uh, Who does that? The family does. His family comes to my house when I get married. Well, and okay, okay. Hold on. Dad. Have you found... Have you found the young suitor yet? I mean, I'm, do you know mom, the guy? Yeah, my mom has found him. If she's hot, where does it not wanna, matter to him? I don't want to marry him. Guaranteed. Do you know? I'm still, I'm still interested in this black guy. Have, have you, have, Oof. have you met? Uh, you have met him. Yeah, I have met him. What's he I do? Don't like him. What's he do? He owns a liquor store. Oh boy. Well, listen. Uh, let's let's be honest. Um, 
I've said this many times, and uh, people don't uh, appreciate this, but uh, some cultures are clearly better than other cultures, let's face it. The ones well, where you denigrate and beat the chicks. Well, they're finally... Worse, worse culture than our culture. Are, are I'm going way out on a limb in saying that here, people, Drew, where you beat uh, the ladies. Know. Shut up, Drew. I'm tired no, no, of you listen, defending I, I'm not going to defend it. I'm just going to say people are beginning to analyze this in the terms of what they're calling normative abuse. Yeah. But some cultures make abuse normative. Yeah. And this is what that is. Yeah. Well, wow. Don't be if I left my house to be with somebody yeah. else. Yeah, listen, who wants to marry a guy from this? My to my family. You don't want to marry a guy from the, your culture because he's, he's going to degrade you. No, I'm not going to say he would degrade me. My, my sister married a wonderful man. He did? He, she did? Yeah, my brother is a wonderful man, and he has a good wife. But I'm just not... Yeah, arranged, arranged marriages can work. I mean, well, they, yeah. My the, mom and dad have an arranged marriage. They were married yeah. for 36 years. My dad just passed away a month ago. Oh. And so, Mom's I mean, standard. I know it can work. No, no, you kidding? You saw he met her old boyfriend. He, 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 he met him. <laughs> That's how he died. He died of a massive corner. Yeah. Hello, I'm Lucius. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Osama Bin Laden. I'm Lucius. <laughs> and he just fell over right on the floor. All right, Drew. How dare you make these stereotypes, Drew? Is that what killed him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's true, please. How oh, dare you? <laughs> uh, Ariel? Yes? All right. I'm sorry for Drew's behavior. <laughs> yeah, I have a very political essay. So you better be careful. I know. No, your dad, your dad. <laughs> you very what? I said I have a very political essay. So you better be careful. Political. <laughs> it sounds like saying My essay. My last name's Arafat. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, man. but I'm not related. I'm from Iraq. He's from the outside. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, look, I, I do agree with uh, Drew and you, and we've shouted that on this show many a time, which is um, arranged marriages last longer because when, when you're able to pick your own, own partner, you, you go to the, the dark side, the sick side <laughs> often, right. oftentimes, right. and you'd be better off if we just spun a wheel. Yeah. Look, our parents are trying to make an objective you know, okay, decision. Okay, there, there's, yeah. there's no doubt that if you married this guy it might last a hundred years but the point is is you don't want to do this yeah I, okay I'll... and and let me say this i don't know if you got to wave us to say this to your parents but why did you guys come here to be away from saddam hussein okay so here's the thing everybody comes to this country and yet they want to cling on to their culture which uh everyone says is fine i think it's ridiculous you left your country because it was an oppressive culture and you wanted this culture so if you're going to do it do it so if i do it and i tear all my ties with my family then mm. i i think I you can i think person? you can call here's the thing if they truly love you and and they truly have feelings for you they will not sever all ties with you just because you don't want to get married. Why, don't, why don't you focus on not getting married now do, do, I, don't, I don't have to get married now, but I don't want to be in a relationship with a Chaldean guy. I, I know. So just so you let that be your battlefield right now. Not marriage, not now, not a relationship. That's all. Just state, you state it clearly and see if you can get them to calm down and you can go on about your life. All right? No, not all right. <laughs> all right <let's> <laughs> oh, my. All right, now what do you think of the war? Um, I... I'm, I agree with Bush. You want to get uh, Saddam out of there? Yes. He killed my uncle. Ooh. He did? Yeah. I have some Chaldean patients, and they, they just said it was just unbelievably horrible. Yeah. I think Chaldeans terrible. were especially he, oppressed, though, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh, the, guy, he, the, the guy deserves... The guy needs to die. He, yeah. he just needs to die. He Bush is also... He's not righteous in saying that he can go in a country where that somebody else runs and thinks that he could just take him out of there you're not he's not god yeah well what do you want you want another 30 years of uh, vicious oppression I mean, they're over there they're doing their thing obviously the people can't stand up to him why should we we have our own problems over here mm. well what do you want then you want you want the rest of your family to get killed by this guy leave those you, political asylum you could leave we left yeah, but not not every. First off, not everyone has the option of just picking up and leaving their country. And no, but if his own people wouldn't stand behind him so tough, then they could get him out of the regime. I mean, like out of his political. Well, standards. yeah, I, I I agree. I think it'd be nice if people stood up. But there's a certain point when the horse gets out of the barn, and if you're if you're as maniacal as he is, and is uh, is 
is a uh, paranoid as he is by all accounts. This is uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, every time there's the, the even inkling or just a, just a little ripple of a coup, you just viciously kill everybody. It's hard to get something off the ground. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's what's going on, or what has been going on there for many years. All right. Well, good times. And in order to leave a country, they have to take their whole family with them, and organizing that, and you know, getting everybody to go. Because anyway, well, and where, where are you? Where are you going? And how, what's your plan? The entire country leaves Iraq and goes yeah. where? You know what I mean? Yeah. Who's, who's going to have them? Yeah. And those and uh, the beauty of uh, that uh, part of the world. Um, it's not uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood over there. Everyone magically hates each other. Hmm. I wonder what that is. Well, we're all just different, beautiful cultures. That's all we got to remember, everybody. Just different, not bad, just different. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Did you take all those almonds to the office? We got no. We got them here. Buried them here somewhere. All right, uh, Lauren. No, do you digging those out, Drew? Yeah. The almonds. I'm going to average 750 smoked almonds a night until those two cases are depleted, Drew. You got to mention Meza Inc. Meza Inc. M e z z a. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they sent us all these almonds, but Drew, they sent uh, us. Uh, oh, it says twenty-two dollars worth of almonds. You don't have to give a plug every single night. Well, but it was it was such. Ex- <laughs> Listen, it's not the amount. It's it's the how can I say this? The 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 joy this gift has brought us. I, I agree. Okay. I agree too. But it, it sets a dangerous precedent when people uh, send us uh, eleven dollars worth of crap and we give them a plug every night. Plus, it's brought me no joy. Next time, I like send yogurt or something that's loud yeah. and horrible on my ears. Yeah. Oh. Plus, we shouldn't tell people we eat stuff that they send to us. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Right, Drew's going to get in. Oh, no, the uh, the uh, Sultan over here needs a little coffee refill too. Well, uh, yeah. Well, his uh, his uh, lady in waiting is over here bringing him his smoked nuts. All right, you ready to roll here, Drew? Yep. Kevin. Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. What's up? All right. Well, uh, this girl I know, she has herpes and she wants to have sex, and I'm not sure like what the risks are and if I should or if I shouldn't. You know, there's a question I don't usually ask that I should, which is how long has she had it for? What was it? How long has she had it for? Um. I think maybe like a month or two months. She, she's recently contracted it. Yeah. All right. Earlier on in the infection, in the infection, people tend to be more contagious. Okay. They tend to have more frequent outbreaks, more robust outbreaks, create more virus. Is she on medication for it? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so that'll suppress some of that viral production, and then you can wear a condom that can make it even safer. Genital herpes? Uh, I don't know. She just told me it was herpes. I, I hope. I imagine that's what she's talking about. Yeah. That's people to me when they're talking about that. How old is she? She's 18. All right. And if she has no symptoms and she's on antiviral medication, and you wear a condom, it's a reasonably safe thing to do, but it's impossible to be completely safe with herpes. You can always contract it somewhere. Okay. True. What about what I do before I'm with the hooker? I hit my dork with Raid. You know what I mean? Yeah, Raid. Spray down with Raid, nutsack, yeah. tubes, a-hole, whole area in there. <laughs> Sometimes I'll let a fogger go off my underpants. The fogger in the ass? <clears throat> no, underpants. I don't think it'll do so much. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't think I would do it, huh? It's good times, though, huh? No. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk to uh, Jake, who's 16. Jake? Yeah. What's up? Um, yeah, I had a question for uh, Dr. Drew, and it, my question was if you uh, hold back uh, your uh, ejaculation to... Uh, Make your orgasm last longer in the same way you could hold back a pee stream. Would that be bad for you, like in your? Well, first of all, it will not. It will not make your orgasm last longer. Okay. Well, the orgasm. How can you hold it back the same way you hold back a pee stream? Well, you could. You could. Some people can contract a muscle in there that will kind of hold it back temporarily, but it will come. Yeah. Then, then it just leaks out. It leaks out exactly. Basically, that's right. Like uh, something, you know, something you left in the car. And it's not as though you're going to explode or have a serious medical problem. It's not the healthiest thing you can do for your your outflow. You're 16. There. Where are you going? Who are you satisfied? Well, he, just wants a, he just wants a longer orgasm. He wants to beat off longer, right? So maybe wait longer in between beating off, and you'll have a longer orgasm, more intense. 
or do what I do, beat off more often. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I read this in a yeah. Maxim You're magazine. Right. Yeah, Maxim magazine. Right. Yeah, and it just said it uh, makes it last longer. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't. All right. <laughs> but you want to tell us where you read that again? Uh, Maxim. Maxim. <laughs> All right. You have a girlfriend, Jake? No. No. Work on that. That'll make you happier. Shocking. All right. And listen, uh, you people out there who read things, uh, I used to think that, okay, if you saw something on TV or maybe in a tabloid, you couldn't believe it. But uh, if you read it, if you read it in a magazine or a newsprint, uh, oh, yeah, it was true. Wait till they start writing articles about you. And uh, not just lies. I just mean factually screwed up, wrong. Yeah. Three cores of the stuff. Just, uh, just flat out wrong. Like if you you were there, you know what was going on. You just uh, you mean people p- inter- people interview you, you tell them some things, and they twist the facts, or if they do well, some not, research on you and screw that all up. Not not only that, just just flat out screw ups all the time. Like yeah. in the in the newspaper, the uh, the other day they were doing a, a thing on uh, great uh, April Fool's pranks over the years, and they cited uh, K Rock, the mother station out here, Kevin and Bean, the morning show. For doing some good pranks over the years that Jimmy used to be involved with and uh, now Ralph and all that kind of stuff. And they had this one that they cited where um, uh, one of the guys from the morning show got in a fight with the lead singer from Radiohead. And that was the big that was the big thing. And they said that uh, Bean got in the fight with uh, What's-His-Nose from Radiohead. And Jimmy and I were reading the article the other day and we both looked at each other and said, Kevin got in a fight with him. Oh, yeah. Bean didn't get in a fight with him. Now, I wasn't through an interview. It's just they're wrong. Right. They screwed up. It's not. If you're reading it, it's not that big a deal. But if you know the guys, it doesn't make sense. It's all the time. All the time. Yeah, that's just one little tiny itsy-bitsy example. No, if, someone, if someone wrote an article about you in the newspaper and you read it, they would have a couple of dates screwed up. They'd have your they, name spelled wrong, where you went to school would be wrong, who they interviewed, the teacher, whatever. When they name, ask you like how you met you. this or how you got into that, that would be screwed up. So yeah. everything you read, look at it as... Uh, yeah, the three quarter factual. Unless it's the Bible. And then if it's editorial, <laughs> if it's editorial, if it's somebody's opinion. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Uh, well, then you can decide to agree with it or not. Desiree? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. Mom was laid off again. Yeah. Thinks she's suicidal. She's yeah. depressed. She cries a lot. Uh, <laughs> cries a lot, sleeps a lot. No. Has she expressed suicidal thoughts? Um, not to me or my sister, but I'm pretty sure she's thinking about them. Well, how did you get that impression without her telling you? <clears throat> well, I have I have depression myself, and so I know, like, what it's like to be there. And just, like, the way that she's acting and stuff, she's, like, never happy, always mm. crying. Yeah, we get that she's depressed, but suicidal right, thoughts... Drew, get off that part. I mean, uh, she's not, she yeah. not suicidal. Yeah. But Liz, how old is she? Uh, like, 45. Because here's the thing. Drew, stop me if I'm wrong here, but 45-year-old women don't usually squeeze a trigger. No, that's true. They're just depressed. They take pills once in a while, but that's... Yeah. Uh, when they have kids to take care of, they usually pay attention to that. They don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, but Desiree? Yeah. Your mom's depressed, and you're depressed, and that's uh, that's sad, because uh, my mom was depressed, too, and it was uh, it was a bummer. What kind of work did she do? Um, She did permitting for, like, oil companies and... Like land use permitting. Where, where's your dad? Um, Oregon. And you're in Alaska. Yeah. Has she running away from him? Uh, no, like when I was four, he was an abusive alcoholic. No, she wouldn't run away from him. No. Yeah. Yeah. Why'd she go to Alaska? Um, because this is where all, all our family is. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing: your mom is depressed. You can uh, try to get her to some help or suggest some help. But you cannot be responsible for her. And she should get help. She doesn't have to suffer like this. But you, you don't have to suffer like this either, though. I mean, you're 18. Right. You planning on going to college or uh, oh, yeah. getting a job at a uh, seal blubber rendering plant or something? I don't know what the big work is up there. I work at a daycare center. Daycare for seals? No. Care for I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. Let's move on. Do um, so you work daycare? You have a good job? You, you like it? Yeah. You like the kids? I love the kids. Yeah, no, that's nice. Okay, so listen, if you got a job where you love the people you work with or work for or work on, 
That's pretty good. See, Adam has I mean, trouble em- empathizing if someone is not describing an experience that he's had. And when he was depressed, he hated his work. And that's what made it especially <clears throat> painful for him. Listen, Jack Hole, I'm saying to you, Drew, that at, eight, right. at 18, 18 to 30, well, let's call it 18 to 25, 26, most young people have crappy jobs. Yeah, they just yeah. do. They, they yeah. work in the mail room. They work long hours. They work as, like, assistants or receptionists or laborers or whatever, and their jobs suck. Yep. And if you've got a job at 18 that you can go to that you really dig, that, you're, you're kind of ahead of the game there. Yep. So, Desiree. Yeah. And once you look at uh, moving out of the house and getting your crap I, together. I am out of the house. I'm, I live down the road from her. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Well, she's, the thing is, though, is that she's on medication. She's on antidepressants. What's she taking? Um, effects her. All right. You know how much she's taking? Um, I think she's taking 150. All right. That's a sort of an average slash smaller dose. And you call her doctor. Let them know that she's still, or she or she know that she's not doing well. See if they change that. She doctor. <laughs> come on, Drew. Get serious. All right. I think uh, when we come back, I'm going to uh, read more from my uh, Social Security statement. Ooh, yay. Yeah. That's my uh, total earnings for uh, the year since I started working up until present. And uh, I don't know where we left off, Drew. Was it 1988 with uh, the Big Fat Zero? Yeah. This kind of reminds me of the Andy Kaufman film when uh, he gets up and reads, what was it, a Faulkner novel or something? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back. Hey, everybody, it's Love Lion. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. So I was down at the uh, Toyota Grand Prix of uh, Long Beach, and I finally get to race in uh, this week, uh, doing some, today actually, doing some practice. On the street? Yeah, the track is uh, the street, well, it's a bunch of streets that are barricaded off, cement barricades. How was it? And, um, it was in- interesting, no, nah, but it was interesting racing with cement, you know, the barricades are 18 inches off the track. Mm. You know, so if you get if you get loose, you just hit a, a concrete in a wow. lot of places. So it's it's kind of hairy, but it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun going 110 miles an hour on Shoreline Drive, huh. which is probably a 35 mile an hour street. You wow. know, you get to drive on the public streets, and sometimes the signals are on too, so you get to go through. That's weird. Uh, you just go through red lights. It's like a video game. Yeah, yeah. It really is like uh, one of those video games. And like I said, those Grand Prix, you know, sort of like, I guess Miami's probably a lot like it. Whenever they do a Grand Prix course in the city, all they can do is put up a bunch of cement barriers and then put a bunch of tires, like, yeah. in certain corners and things like that. But yeah. uh, it was fun. Buzz so, Aldrin ruined his car. Is that it? Is he out then once you run a car? No, it's another car. So, your Social Security statement. Huge feet, that Buzz Aldrin. Big hands, too, right? Big hands, big feet. And I'm, I'm guessing... Uh, Big uh, lunar lander, you know what I'm saying, there, buddy? Yeah. The uh, the eagle has landed. All right. Blah, blah, blah. I, yeah. I want to hear your numbers. Oh, my numbers. Yeah. I was thinking, maybe we'll do that in the 11 o'clock All right, hour. All right that's fine. That's fine. Oh, so fast? We right? only got a few minutes here to take calls. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, let's go. Jill? Yeah? What's the matter, baby doll? Um, you guys are going to think I'm stupid. Yeah. Um... My problem is that this kid that I know, um, he, uh, uses needles, and I've shared with him before. Shared needles? Yeah. And yeah, what drug are you guys using? Um, heroin. All right. That, that's not stupid. That's a serious disease. Um, and I can it, It's showing you how serious it is by how reckless your behavior has become. The, 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 the drive to use the drug has taken over your even desire to survive. It's just superseded that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't use it on a regular basis. Well, it's addiction. I, I, you don't have to use it so regularly. Uh, addiction is defined by consequences. Hold on, any any six any anyone any chick who's uh, using the rig is addicted, please. Yeah. And using regularly is not what defines addiction. Addiction is defined by Doesn't cons- matter. by we, consequences. We, women don't take needles unless they're into it. Yeah. And I've been going to NA and stuff. Good. But, All right. I mean, he a while ago. He shared with this um, 
one lady, and she has hepatitis B or something, and but the, clean the needle with bleach. Then yeah, but that's not that the needle isn't the problem. It's you draw we draw up when you're finding the vein that pulls blood into the into the drug. Yeah. And that's that's where you get the virus. Not off the needle. Uh uh-uh. Why not? Because you're pulling, you're, you're pulling stuff up Yeah, but up you, would, you would get it off the needle. Yeah, the needle. Uh, the, to clean it off. Yes, the needle also, right. Yeah, so it's better than nothing. Jill? <laughs> yeah. Why, you think you have it? I'm not sure. Well, you got to get checked, right? Is it B or C that she has, or both? I'm not sure. All right, it's probably C. I mean, that, that's the IV drug user's hepatitis these days. Oh, okay. You can, get, you can get vaccinated against B, and B usually you get sick when you get, so you haven't been sick lately, right? No. C you just get, and the problem with C is that it causes cancer and things. And well, when, when did you when did you find out about this? Um, I don't know, not too long ago. All right. Well, what's the matter beside right. this? Well, it's a heroin addict. Well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> beside that. Huh? Uh, well, I mean, well, it's, it's, here, it, it, it's, 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 you're it's heroin addict sixteen. It also means you're a trauma survivor. So she had something awful happen to her growing up, also, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What happened to you? Um, my sister was a heroin addict, mm. Mm. and she, like, sc- she screwed over my family really bad. Mm. Mm. That doesn't seem like enough. What's your fam? How was your family? My family's fine. How mm-hmm. is it that they had two heroin addict daughters? Um, yeah. Just luck of the draw? I guess. <laughs> mm. Mm. Anyway, okay. listen, well, we got uh, some Jill, here, here's the deal. You need medically managed treatment. You've been going to NA. That's great. It's not been enough. And you now sort of, in, you, you, because of the progression of your disease, in spite of going to NA, you've endangered your life. That means it's not working. It's time to get some real help, get some professional help. And in the course of that, get the hepatitis titer, see what the, state, the situation is with your liver. Maybe it's fine. B and C are treatable conditions. Well, they can be treated anyway. And uh, but pretty much no one's going to treat you until you've been sober six months. So let's get with the program. Get going. You're going to need to be in a structured environment for quite a while. All right. Well, good times, Justin. Hello. Justine. Oh, yes. Justine. All Thank right. I missed so the either. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank what? you so much for taking my call. Thank you so much. What's up, Justine? All right. Um, basically, this is going to sound kind of ridiculous, but I have. This friend that I met at a dance, and I mm-hmm. got his number. Uh-huh. It was just a school dance, and uh-huh. we call. I mean, I called him, and we talked, and he's really nice. But I, he's he's really cool. He's one of those like perfect guys, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. He's how old? Crazy. Now you're 13. How old is he? He's also he's 14. He's 14. Yeah. Right. And What's cool about him? What's perfect about him? Perfect about him. He's Black green nail polish. He's just a total ladies man. He's you know, <laughs> he's. <laughs> he's the a, way he handles his peachy folder, the way parks his chopper row. Yes, he's a you know, yeah, poet, writer. <laughs> he's a, I know, I know, I know. I'm he winds his beanie to the left. Pardon? Okay. So, anyway, so I really liked him, and then I decided... Hold, I don't hold on a second. I, I, just, I, I like to watch a phone screener, Brian, uh, explain physically the jokes to uh, junior <laughs> producer, Lauren. <laughs> I said, he winds his beanie to the left, and then there was a little, little confusion, and I noticed uh, Brian explaining the joke. Actually, showing the beanie being spun, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hi, Justine. Sorry about that. All right. Oh, also, I forgot, I forgot to say thank you so much for doing everything you guys do on, on the show. I think it's awesome. Thank you, Jane. You know what's nice about Jane? Justine has a nice uh, observing side of her, uh, you know, sort of, no. she can look at herself, laugh at herself, go, I know this is silly, but she's there good. I am. She's good people. She's good there people. There I am. I love you guys, too. All right. It, it, this is where it starts to get interesting. So I, I decided, all right, this guy, I don't have a chance with him. It's not that I have lowest self-esteem or anything. So I called him back about two and a half months later, and I, here, if you're going to think I'm a total psycho, but I said, hey, do, I, I said his name, I'm not going to say his name because you guys flip out when people say people's names. Right. I said, hi, it's me. And he's like, who's me? And I'm like, well, you know who I am. He's like, no, I don't. I was like, oh, I'm your guardian angel. And he's like, okay. So even though we don't, he doesn't really know who I am, we became like super, super good friends. And so now I'm totally, totally into him. Mm-hmm. Uh, just over the phone? He, well, yeah, but I also see him like at dances and stuff. As Isn't he interested in finding out who you are? Does he? Oh, yeah, totally. He's like, yeah, we have to go hang out, you know. And But he, but he knows you also. Yeah. So he's going to be disappointed, you think? 
Um, well, that's what I, that's kind of why I called the show is because I wanted to. I decided I'm gonna see him on Friday at a dance, another dance, and um, I invited him as the normal me, the normal Justine, not the angel Justine. Wow. Yeah, but yes. doesn't he, doesn't he recognize your voice? Yeah. Well, that's the weird thing. That's the thing about like I know Drew. You're good at you know recognizing people's voices, but yeah. you know I was kind of like you know. Guys never, like, I can call a guy one night, the next night call and be someone else, and they don't even notice. I'm like, what's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, they're Girls 14, 15. Yeah. 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 So I was wondering if we could call him. Tonight? If I could tell him how I feel. Tonight? Tonight, yeah. On air. Yeah. If I could tell him how I feel, and you guys could, like, guide me along, and, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or I could sit here for an hour and read my social security statement. <laughs> um, you have his home number. Yes. <laughs> you think he's awake? Um, yeah, his, his parents are probably going to be called. I'll probably have to apologize and everything, but... All right. Um, all right. Well, let, let us uh, take a break and we'll... We'll uh, talk about it amongst ourselves. We'll convene. Yeah. Which means uh, me watch Drew take a leak and uh, eat more of these uh, smoked almonds and, <laughs> and then forget about it. But hang on, Justine. <laughs> hang you. on, hang on. I like that little spark plug known yeah. as Justine. We'll see. Hey, hey, I think we'll try this. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LV 191. All right, when we left off, we're speaking to young, sparky little uh, Justine. Justine is uh, 13. And we also have Joseph on the phone, holding, listening. Yeah, but we're going to talk to Justine for a second first. Now, uh, um, Justine uh, met a guy, liked the guy. Well, wait, no, no, no. Joseph's holding. You want to. Mm, no. He's holding. I don't care. No, I'm going to spill the whole thing before she has a chance to talk to him? She was supposed to tell him. Well, I'm not... Uh, okay, I won't give it away. Right. But I want to talk to Justine because... Uh, oh, you're saying Joseph can hear us. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Here's my point, though. I'm not so sure about this Justine. <laughs> a little, little too confident here. Okay. Why? Why, why, you're, why is your plan to uh, do this with us? What, well, do you, what do you need us for? First of all, I listen to you guys all the time, and I just think you guys have a way of doing things that are special, like all the other hotlines. All right, good enough. Good enough. <laughs> That's all we need. I just need a little ass. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm... <laughs> no, what I do, just press... I'm trying not press, to yeah. kiss up. I'm Hold on just a second. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> no. That's good. Well, I, when I, like... Interview. Here we go. That's good. There we go. There we go. Down. Okay. Joseph? Yes? <gasps> Hi. Hey. It's Angel. I know. Did they tell you? Yes, they did. Who, who, what? They didn't tell them anything. Hey, Adam. Wait. No one told you anything. Well, no one told me. Okay. Do you know what you're on, like, on right now? Yeah, no. Okay. Kind of weird. What yeah. Is? Well, you're on Loveline, and... Do we need to apologize to his parents, or we're okay that way? Wait, what is it? Do we need to apologize to his parents, or we're all right? That's cool. All right. <laughs> hey, what's up, Adam and Drew? Joseph? What's happening there, Joe? Joe, uh -huh. how old are you? How old are you? Fourteen. She, she only hangs out with overconfident people, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why we got 13 up there, but, uh, all right, so go ahead, uh, Angel. Well, okay, how should I, how, wait, Adam. Yeah. Help her, Adam. How, how should I be original? Well, <laughs> I'm a little, uh, I'm a little, you know, first off, I got four hours sleep last night, so I'm a little out of it. <laughs> Secondly, I'm only so interested in what goes on on this show, so I was only listening with, like, one ear. When you told me yes. that Joseph knows you by two names. Yes. And why? Well, should we tell Joseph those two names? Yeah, go for it. Okay, those names are uh, Angel. Right, Joseph? As, as his angel. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Justine. Yeah. You, do you know that it's the same person? Yeah. You do? Now he knows, yeah. But did you know before tonight? Yeah, I did. You, you did. did. I, I thought I had you going pretty well for a while. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. All right, let's cut to the chase. Joseph, you, are you interested in uh, Justine or Angel? Yeah. You are? Is, yeah, is, uh, you'd like to go on, like to go on a date with her? I don't know. I think you're just like, oh, I'm so happy. You have no idea. Well, wait a minute. But you guys have been talking for months now. Yeah, but she yeah, she was afraid okay, to listen, always. I've liked you the entire time. I am like totally like. No, but, but, uh, Justine, don't don't give up the ship yet. Hold on a second. Right, yeah, right. slow down. Yeah, relax here. Just yeah. you, okay. we're just gonna get you a date My heart's here. going kind of fast. You know, the hormones are just rising. Yeah, yeah. The hormones yeah. are rising, keep, Joseph. Keep Play the uh, cards a little closer to the vest right. there, Justine. All right, <laughs> All right so, jo Joseph, what do you uh, tell us what you think about Justine? 
I think she's a really great girl. I want to meet her. It's just she never talks to you. She never talks to you? Yeah. Well, she said she says she talks to you all the time as Angel. I know. Well, yeah. She just called me on the phone. She doesn't. She never tells me. But she never like lets me see her or anything. Hmm. Do you guys? Uh, you guys go to the same school? No, we don't. Uh, well, next year we're going to the same school. We're going to the same high school. Well, she was afraid that if she saw you in person, you would. She didn't know you knew her to be the same person. I'm kind of like chunky. Oh. No, she, and, she, and you. She knew you knew who Justine was, but she was afraid that if you found out it, she was also Angel, that that would be the end of that. Yeah, because I was kind of two different people. Like Angel is me, and then for some reason Justine, I just like. All right, but uh, wait, Justine's not her real name. Angel's a real name. No, no, just uh, no, not no, real no, name. No, uh. okay. It's confusing. I know. I'm even confused. Okay, myself. quiet down. Yeah. J- Joseph. Yeah. If you knew Angel and Justine were the same person. And you like Justine and or Angel. Why didn't you ask her out? I don't know. Don't care. Well, that doesn't sound like you're that interested. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what is the answer to that, Joseph? Or you can just ask her out right now and get out of you know, get out of this. Well not no no, here's not I don't want to go out with him if he doesn't like me. What? Well I don't is know. Is there some special know. language or code they're speaking here? I don't, like, if he doesn't like me, if he's interested in, like, someone else, or, like, it's not going to work out, then, I, like, I wouldn't want to go out with him. Joseph, you seeing anybody now? No. You're not? Oh, yes, I am. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Are you seeing Angel? No. Justine? No. So you have a girlfriend, then? Yes, I do. All right. All right, so it's not going to work with uh, Justine. Right. Okay. Hold on now. So how do I put him on hold? Yeah, right? uh, he'll go on hold right now. All right. Hey, Justine. Yeah. Bad news. Yeah. Well, I did, I, I'm confused. Don't worry. Because at first he went, I, oh, I, oh, great. I really want to never likes me. See her. Uh, he, was just, see he, her. He, was just, he was just taken by surprise. And then it's like, uh, do you have a girlfriend? No. Well, oh, uh, yeah. Well, he just realized she may be listening. He's, he, he's, he's you know, he, he, gets, he, gets, he gets his share around the block, you know. Well, you don't want to be around that, do you? you? No, I don't. But I, like, I don't know what he says that's true and isn't true. Like, all the stuff he says that makes you totally fall for him, you know? So. Like what? Like I have a girlfriend? No, no, no. Just things that make you like a person. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, listen. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna get to the bottom of Joseph in about 20 seconds. Okay. And then whatever answer he gives, that is a, that's like a judge. It's binding. That, right. That's final. All right. You, you must, uh, you must uh, adhere to uh, whatever his answer is. Joseph? What what I do here, Drew? Joseph? He's on yeah, I hear him talking in the background. No. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No. Joseph. Hold on. No. Okay, Drew, where's the show going? Really? All right, I'm All putting right. Joseph All on right. hold. You can put her on hold, too. All right, everyone's on hold. Justine. Yes. Okay, Joseph said he had a girlfriend. Okay. And he said he couldn't go out with you because he has a girlfriend. Okay. Okay, you can no longer pine for Joseph. Okay. You can't call him up as a... Uh, Mystery date or anything like that. Yes, I know. He's right. back. You're, you're. I don't care. Well, you're, let's just uh, get just one, one clarity. Come on, just one time. Get it real clear. I, he just got the. He just I said think, it. I, I, I feel very unclear about. Oh, you're talking about Justine. Anyway. Oh, who cares? All right, Joseph. Yeah. All right, you have a girlfriend. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You do. Well, wh- What's her name? Danielle. Okay. And well, why we when we first called, were you so interested in meeting Justine? Well, because I wasn't with her when I met Justine. Yeah, but you said you were interested in meeting her. Right, she you, never let you meet shot, her. The guy's fourteen. He's he's, he's got uh, he's got soap in his ears. Joseph. Yeah. You can't. You're not interested in Justine, are you? Right. All right. Not as a not as a girlfriend. I don't know. Okay. Mm, <laughs> nice. Stupid Drew. Crystal. I just punched the uh, whole keyboard with my hand because I tried to keep going back to figure out what the 13-year-old needed to say uh, in between conversations with his mom. All right. Okay. Listen. He ain't interested. Mm. All right? Yep. Sorry, Justine. That's it. Don't. That's fine. Plenty of guys who will be. You just move on. You'll be fine. Trevor. What's up, fellas? You're 20. Hey, Adam. What's up? Big fan of yours. Thanks. Kind of admirer because you know you're a blue collar, blue collar kind of guy. Well, I don't know about blue collar. You were, 
But well, I, I want mean, you to keep going. I, I need 90 to uh, 2003. 90 to 2003. Now, now you're making over $2 million a year, I figure, if you're paying seven fifty eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 in tax. Mm -hmm. well, let's get there. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens here. Mm. All right, so quick uh, recap. I got my uh, Social Security uh, breakdown. It said uh, how much money I made uh, every year since I entered the workforce in 1980. We, st we just finished up with a zero year, I think. Yeah. You're making about 27000 Eighty, uh, yeah. I'll just eighty-nine. Just uh, recap. Uh, from from nineteen eighty to nineteen eighty-nine, uh, averaging about four thousand, five thousand uh, dollars a year. So what are we in? Eighty-nine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Just yeah. finished with a zero in eighty-eight. Yeah. Right. Eighty-nine. Everyone's sitting down. Twenty-two thousand five hundred and forty-three dollars. Quite a comeback. Read it in a week. Yeah, you know what I was doing then. Earthquake rehab for the Ooh, city. Yeah, sitting pretty at about uh, nineteen and change an hour. Nice. Yeah, with oh, benefits. Yeah. Uh, no, uh -huh. no. What were you driving at that point? Uh, now I'm driving oh, at a, that point. At that point, oh yeah. Well, I'm, that's what I mean. At that point, I'm driving a uh, very sporty Datsun uh, seventy-eight Datsun uh, <laughs> regular cab, bench, vinyl seat, no headrest, no air conditioning. Seventy-eight. Uh, mini, Mini pickup truck. And, Seventy. Uh, those things were mini, not, not were, street. There weren't mini. There weren't mini pickups. There were micro <laughs> pickups back then. I, I have to. You'd have, have to grease cab. my ass and get a running start to get into the cab. Yeah. No. What did you say? Crew cab. Yeah. No. Regular cab. Ah. Crew cab was uh, wasn't even around really in like seventy eight mm. or seventy nine. But keep in mind the car's ten years older than whatever the date is. All right. So. All right. Move along. Now we're moving on to nineteen ninety. Six thousand three hundred and twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. Finished up with the city, feeling pretty good about myself. Probably did a little under the work. I was still uh, renting rooms and houses, uh, doing this kind of stuff. Still, no dental, no medical insurance. Under the table work at this point. A little bit of that. You're learning the system. Ninety-one. Now, now <laughs> things starting to look up. Zero. <laughs> oh my God. Zero and ninety-one. Uh huh. I'm not a child at this point, Drew. No, I understand. It's not I'm like I'm 19 and I'm uh, in college or mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. then, then I'm, you know, starting to, uh, starting to creep up on 27, 28 years old there at this point. Big fat zero. 92, $3,521. 93, ooh, pretty consistent. $3,984. Maybe, did, you, did you reach some threshold and start taking everything under the table? You figure, oh, I can get by with this. I made a little under the table, but it wasn't really that much, really. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, 94. Yeah, now I'm living in uh, La Cunada, I think. Had a hot dog. La Crescenta with uh, Ralph and a couple other guys in a house up there. I heard about that hot tub, too. Yeah, good times. Six thousand four hundred and forty-two dollars for the year, mm -hmm. but now, ninety-five. I meet Jimmy Kimmel. Oh yeah. Start doing a little radio, this and that, and uh, the very, very generous uh, Trip Reeb over here at K Rock. We're we back at zero. It's back at zero. No, <laughs> thirty-six thousand two hundred and twenty-one. Dollars, wow. ladies and gentlemen. You have to upgrade your car by this point. Now, I, yeah, now I'm driving a beat up Supra because I don't need a truck because I'm starting to get into radio. But I'm still, I'm still, I got the, I got the Supra about a year and a half before I completely got out, out of construction. So I'm still hanging wood and stuff out of the back of the car. So now eight years ago. Yeah, eight years. All right, now we go to what ninety six. Three hundred and sixteen thousand dollars, four hundred and twenty four. That is Love Line on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that, was, that was largely Love Line on television. Must have been uh, TV uh, yeah. Love Line. Uh, 97, three uh, $354,661. Maybe, uh, I don't know, we're starting doing the man show there? No, not yet. Like 98, $543,453. <laughs> Almost a million there. <laughs> Almost. 99, 1 million. Two hundred and thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and three dollars. <laughs> yeah, but then it seemed to level out. And then in two thousand, but I think I made more than this in two thousand. I don't know, Drew. You're going to have to read this and see if uh, this is the uh, complete and total after a certain okay. point. Then it's one million and change, and one million and change after that, and then uh, two o two. 
it uh, it went up. But it's not it's not uh, it's it's not shown there. The two o two doesn't do it. No, not yet recorded. It's a, yeah, that's the one that they're looking into right now. I suspect. <laughs> yeah, there's there's uh. there's marshals at my house right now. No. All right, there you go. See, there's hope for everybody. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I work in a warehouse. I load freaking trucks every day, making twelve bucks an hour, which yeah. I think is pretty good at, at what I do. Yeah. And uh, just think where Adam was at twenty, age yeah, twenty. Exactly. Well, yeah. age, age twenty, that would have been uh, eighty. Let's say eighty-four, eighty-five, eighty-five, zero. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Hey, Adam. Eighty-four, nine thousand three hundred sixty-seven. <laughs> that was a big year. That was a, for that decade. That really that about capped it. That was biggest biggest I had in the eighties was nine thousand. Well, no, you had one year of seventeen thousand. Ooh, wee! Yeah. All right, that's why. That's why I told you the ladies loved me back then, Drew. You didn't. You didn't believe me. Yeah. All right, Adam. Yeah, Trevor. You on a Stern show about probably six months ago. Uh, Kathy Griffin uh, busted you on on the bus ride to the uh, Super Bowl. Yeah. What happened with that with your wife and all that? Wife was pissed off. Uh oh. Yeah. Wife farting on the bus off. again with Jimmy or something? No, no. We can't, Kathy. Uh, Hey, it's just a whole story about uh, us being, we're going to the Super Bowl, we had a party bus, Some we stopped off uh, somewhere in like uh, Laguna, some chick and her husband wanted to get on board the bus and go to San Diego, I said, yeah, fine, she asked, then then they got off the bus, Kathy made this big deal like I was inviting chicks on the bus, my wife was listening, she got pissed off, Oh, you know. But I don't do what you do, Drew. Which is what? But st- stick my own nose up my own anus and start crying until I flood myself. <laughs> That's what you do, Drew. Not me. I told her, hey, baby, get over it. Don't, don't make me get the Social Security income list out and read that to you again. I'm seeing your wife slowly start to wake up. Yeah, don't worry about She's it. She's had about an ass full of your stuff. Okay, but listen, Trevor. Trevor's right. And look, if you do something wrong, you have to apologize. Hmm. If you apologize for something you didn't do, it implies guilt. Yeah. All right. I told her, get over it. All right. I didn't do anything. Trevor didn't ask and, the question. Huh? Then I yelled at Kathy. Okay. Trevor? Yeah. What was that question? Oh, uh, one, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but uh, 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 my problem is um, when, when I'm in um, trying to... Uh, when I do have sex, uh, I have a. It, 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 it feels like kind of like when your hand falls asleep. That's my door. Was well, his penis disconnects from his body? It's not his penis. Huh? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's where yours goes, Adam. When you get that experience, <clears throat> you know, you've said you've had that time when your penis doesn't belong to you. Yeah, that happened in uh, one of those zero years, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I think where where uh, Trevor is right now. Oh, he's in making, his life. making twelve bucks yeah. an hour. No. Twelve bucks an hour. That that, that equals about five hundred bucks. You don't week. get your penis back until. And, you know that goes a long way in Arizona too. Uh, I, you know, I hear that. You know, L.A., New York's a lot. No, it really does. Yeah, but seriously, when you're making the kind of money I was just reading off here and living in Los Angeles, you're you're uh, you're a ass out of luck. Yeah. All right. I mean, what's your rent? Uh, about four hundred bucks a month. Now, what I, do you... I live with a dude though. You have a one bedroom or two bedroom? Yeah, see, I was paying four something a month in a one bedroom with a dude. What year? Eighty? Eighty five? But that's the all, point. All through, all through now. that, all through that period. But yeah. you were living on the coast, though. No. 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 What is your point? Yeah, that was that was in the early eighties that it was four hundred. Yeah, I mean, change. more and now, and I'd, that was in the valley we, and the heat. You know. We had to have three guys living in one bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So it's cheaper. Better where you are. That's sure. probably making twelve bucks uh, where you are is probably like making ni- eighteen, nineteen bucks out here. Wouldn't you say? But, you're? but at this point, I mean, it, Adam, would you ever imagine that you would clear a million bucks in a year? No. I mean, it, that, all right, that, that's enough. I'm tired of my own success. <laughs> all right, I don't know. Yeah, what's that, wrong that, with in fact, I, that, those sort of numbers must have been like unimaginable. Why? You know I mean, when you're when you're Trevor's age, doing what you were doing with three thousand bucks a year, thinking you million. I mean, who? Is there such a person? No, those are just yeah. weird, crazy numbers you heard about yeah. on entertainment tonight. Right, right. Yeah, so it turns out it's not, it's not squat for celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> we're angry, don't worry. I can't live off this. <laughs> we? We're angry? We, meaning the royal we. That's what I figured. No, you're angry too, Drew. Uh, you're outraged. Crystal? Crystal? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I have couple intimacy issues. I wrote down a couple things that I want to um, state. Um, first, I sometimes I think that sex is wrong, like even when I'm like trying to do it, and I feel that I'm sometimes more intimate where I become, 
I'm a little bit more liberal when I'm with people that I just like random hookups or something. Right, that's right. a common syndrome that that these sort of w people sometimes feel that the the sexual parts of themselves are sort of disavowed or wicked, and the only way they can experience them is if they're with people that they don't feel guilt around. Right. So I feel like if 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 I'm dating a guy and I'm really liking him or something, if I get intimate with him, like. You know, I'm, I just feel like I'm being like dirty. Yeah, or if I'm right. Out yeah, it, 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 yeah. Not, like, not so, Crystal. Get over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, also another thing is that I feel like because I I I'm a I'm a virgin, but I feel like I feel like I have to like kind of hold that unless like no guy's gonna like me or something. Like I feel like I feel like right. there's like certain well, steps. Slow down. Where's all this energy coming from? Uh, I'm just nervous. That's all. I know, but you're you're 19. Yeah. You're virgin. What? What? Where's all these crazy thoughts? Are you religious? Yeah, I was growing up really, like, really religious. Okay. And so I feel like, like, there have to be certain steps. Like, did you have an eating that, disorder or something one time? You have it? No, no. No. Okay. And what? What religion? Uh, Christian. Okay. And and are you less religious now than you grew yeah, up? Yeah, I'm less religious now. You feel bad about that? Not really. Okay. Did did were your parents abusive in some way? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I get. Just wholesale abuse. What, what bad part of your bad parts of yourself? And I'm gonna what keep kind away of from what that. kind of abuse? Oh, every type of abuse. Uh, physical, sexual, mental. Physical, mental, sexual. Oh, sexual abuse too. I thought yeah. you were a virgin. Uh, uh yeah. True. But 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 why do you get into that? But you always do yeah. that. Yeah. If your dad f's you, you're still a virgin. When dad yeah. f's you when you're four, you're not a virgin. <laughs> no, true. Such a, I would always get into this with true. I well, listen, think it's weird. you may be chaste, but listen, you know our callers consider virginity a technicality when a penis crosses the plane of the vagina. That's no. it. Right. Period. No, Drew, it's what you consider a virgin. No, I think it's never chaste considered virginity. that a virgin. I I just, I just think it's I just a weird like, distinction to make. I just feel like if I have sex with somebody, like they're gonna have that hanging over my head for the rest of my life or something. That's se well, well, who sexually molested you? Uh, uh, my dad. Ooh. Your dad? Yeah. The super religious guy? Yeah. Oh my god. Right. Well, you're, you're, yeah. Look, I was just watching the whole thing last night on the uh, Green River Killer, who was killing <laughs> all those prostitutes up in the <laughs> Seattle area, and you know he killed like fifty. Chicks, and you know, he was proselytizing during the day with his Bible mm. to everybody, and you know, f going to church and feeling all freaked out. And, and listen, it's sort of hyper religious is a mental disorder, it's a mental disorder, it's a confusing mental disorder. It's better when the person just does that oh, oh, baby, <laughs> thing all day long with the Napoleon hat on, but your dad was just, just as sick. Is that guy more sick? More sick, the other guy's quaint, yeah. Napoleon Cute. didn't F his kids. As far as I know, not not the crazy Napoleon types. Right, even the real Napoleon. As far no, as no, I know. No. Oh, come on, He's a goofy guy. How dare you? Anyway, uh, Crystal. Yeah. You got to get some therapy. But the things that I've I've tried and. I've no, 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 no. I'm not even gonna. It's not open for negotiation. Yeah, you need to get someone has been through what you've been through. Are you out of the house? No. Oh, no. my God. My parents are divorced. My parents are divorced. I live with my mom. Mm. All right. But your mom is the one who's just crazy enough to live with this guy. Yeah. Marry this guy. She's, she's not all that. She's not all there. She's... Yeah. She's we, we know that. Yeah. She's pretty. Uh, okay. You need to get a job. Fight to keep it. Move out. Get independent and get some therapy and start getting your life in order. For a long, it's like you always ought to be in some therapy, really. With that yeah, kind yeah, of, and you, you have to. You're you're an adult now, unfortunately. What can I do about this now? Like, I well, have, here's I the good. The great what news can I is. What do about this now? Right, because the, I have listen, a boyfriend. And all right. He's, he's, he he <laughs> wants to get that kind of close, but I can't explain it to him unless he'll think I'm like psychotic or something. All right. The good news is that you're able to have a relationship with quality people. You don't just go after and become attracted to a-holes which is what often happens with this kind of history so you're capable it's just you're not totally available to those relationships when you get involved with one of those guys yeah if you can't what let me I, yeah. yeah i mean could there any could you screw up your kid if you sat down to put a battle plan together to f up your kid to you know it'd be sort of zealot religious mm -hmm. and then sexual abuse yeah it's, it'd be see crystal's life could there be anything worse? I mean, in terms of scrambling your kid. Yeah, a little physical abuse in there. All right, but let's say you can only pick two. Yeah, you got that's a good combo. Thank you. 
let's call it the uh, the ace combo. Yeah, the ace. Yeah. Right. Okay, so she is doing relatively well considering where she's from. She's able to have these relationships with quality people. That's a good thing. The fact that she can't be totally abandoning, you know, sexually and all that stuff. Fine. Yeah, that's all right. But we'll listen, take that. I don't like people living in the same house they were sexually abused in when they're 19. We don't know that she's in the same house. She was with mom and moved away from the dad. Well, they got divorced, so dad could have been out of there. Crystal. Yeah. You in the same house? No, but I do keep in contact with my dad. I do. Like, I've, I've actually, Why? I actually, because I just feel like he's my father. Like, I actually sat down with him a year ago, and I asked him, why? What did he, what he say? And believe it or not, he just looked at me. He says, I thought that you wouldn't remember. Well, then then what? <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's, it's That's not a, a good joke. one. It yeah, was, it well, was pretty bad. That's fine. Well, like, you did remember. Now what? What did he say then? And he was just like, I'm really sorry. And I'm... Sorry, that's it. Because I, I, I love my dad. Like I, I keep in contact with him. Oh, yeah. No, I, no, that's great love. No, 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 no. But I'm, I'm not trying to be all the way around him. I'm sometimes. You know, part, part of the healing of this is being able to forgive people exactly, like this. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not going to be resentful and blame my parents for my well, problems. but but you sacrifice. It's all, all a lot of things you say are really healthy, Crystal. But you've still sacrificed a piece of yourself. There's a piece of yourself that you keep sort of walled off and disavowed, and you won't have anything to do with, and certainly won't let anybody else have a piece of it. It's not somebody you care about or respect. You've got to let that part into your relationships. If you can't, then that is therapy, therapy, therapy. All right. Well, that was a good, honest answer by yeah. Dan. Yeah. I didn't know you'd remember. But it's like saying, why did you commit the crime? I didn't think I was going to get caught. That's all that is. Still, one wildly effed up guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So listen. Again, people that are hyper-religious, let's just start treating them as uh, folks that have a uh, mental condition. Thank you. Hey, your buddy Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LV 191. Anderson gave me the point with his elbow, but the way you were giving it to me with your elbow, I thought you were going to unfold the finger. Had an inch, sorry. See what I'm saying? I was ready for the pow, the well, tomahawk. Like yeah. Uno, uno, or you just can <laughs> yeah, but it was, just, it was just the elbow. <laughs> stop, stop. I was waiting for the arm. All right, uh, let's uh, get to the phones. And uh, speak to uh, Ben, who's 19. Ben, yeah. what's up? Oh, uh, not much. Just going to, uh, well, say both, first of all, that you are wonderful people. You're doing a great service for humanity here. God bless you, Ben. Oh, uh, well, thank you, if I believed in him. But anyway, um... Mm. Uh, Good man. Well, somehow sounded depressing coming from Ben. But what's up? No, he's just a smart guy, Ben is. <clears throat> oh, I, I was just, uh... See, the problem is, I've been with my girlfriend for about nine months and our sex life is great except for the fact that she really likes giving head and I cannot get off with it. Born gay. Well, what about to live live gay. gay. Can you enjoy it when she does it? Oh, it feels wonderful. Okay, do you have to get off? Um, no, but she feels yeah, disappointed she, when I don't. Well, she feels like she's not doing a good job. Is she able to, um, bring you to climax any other way oh most certainly um most certainly through, uh, quite through manually and uh oh, manually. how so wow so manually uh, no problem she gives you the hand no problem yeah and it's through really strange actually yeah that's uh, different because well, the hand is usually just sort of a uh, what you get when you don't get the bj or when you didn't pay enough but uh yeah, that's always been my experience. Yeah, but uh, not uh, not through the mouth. Well, listen, that's just your thing. Okay. And uh, we we came up with a little theory about guys like you, which is uh, you're too passionate. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I can see that. You gotta you gotta put it somewhere. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, if you're getting a BJ, you need to have intercourse, hmm. and you've got it in your head that this is how I'm gonna have. This is how I'm going to have my orgasm. Oh, so I'm just romanticizing it, I think. Well, no, I don't know if it's just, necessarily romanticizing. It's just not what right you word. want. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. If you were in prison <coughs> and you had nothing but a glory hole, mm -hmm. and someone said once a week you stick your dork through this uh, hole in this plywood and uh, this chick uh, gives you a hummer, you'd figure out a way to get off. Yeah. But if you're in your bedroom 
and uh, your girlfriend's naked, and you keep thinking, the whole time she's giving you a BJ, you're thinking, I got to get in. Yeah. I got to get in. Yeah. You're not going to have an orgasm. Yeah. And that's not the way, that's not your optimal orgasm. Uh, True. It's like it, you don't want to waste it on the, on the yeah. mouth. Is it, is it, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you, you got the belly, you got the uh, comforter, you got the uh, forehead, mm. you got the uh, small of the back. All these places you could waste it. Why waste it in the mouth? But Drew, as a man of great passion, you, you sympathize, yes? Sympathize, yes. <laughs> so, ben, you're fine. You just have to explain to her that's not you. Okay. I'd also like to challenge Adam about something that he said a long time ago, ceramics. Yes. I know ceramics, and uh, I'd like you to test me, maybe, because all of the previous... Uh, Colors have been rather inept. Oh, right. Please, please tell this guy he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone wants uh, Drew to tell you you're gay. I act, I do ceramics, I know I seem gay, but uh, I'm quite straight. <laughs> yeah, I don't get gay. All right, all right. Uh, how would one do a pinch pot? One would do a pinch pot by first starting out with a moderately moist uh, piece of clay and mm -hmm. then oh, sticking, okay, okay now. sticking the thumb in mm -hmm. and rotating oh. around. Pinching up. All right. All right. Gay okay, enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, how so? How about a coil pot? A coil pot. You'd uh, you'd roll out a long snake mm -hmm. of, uh, mm -hmm. Penis -like. of clay, and then yeah. you'd coil it's it around a, a circular base. All well, right. Like, give me, ask a, like a, a glazing question. Now, 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 when you're at, when you're putting one coil on top of the next coil. How would you get them to stick? You'd score them, and Don't. you might use a little bit of the slip from the bottom of your water. Slip! Did you hear that, Drew? Yeah. That's a ceramic term. Oh. You know what slip is? That's where your water is, I guess. Oh, no. no. Slip is the, uh, is the uh, really, really wet clay on the bottom yeah. of your water. Yeah, it's you like the swampy you're... stuff. Yeah. Disgusting. All right, let's see. Okay, Einstein. You're, uh, you're batting a thousand so far. How about a slab pot? What you do is you take a, uh, you, you measure out a circle, circle, and then you get an appropriate size just slab of clay that you flattened out. You mm -hmm. cut it, and you, and you mm -hmm. take it, and you roll it into the cylinder, score both. Mm -hmm. and uh, you're gay. All right. All right. And uh, the, uh, now, 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 glazing question. Okay. Well, okay. This was ceramic. Well, this ceramic. That was just. Firing. Firing. Yeah. Firing question. Okay. Uh, Raikou. Raikou? Yes, the process, uh, Raikou, and firing a pot. You got me there, actually. There Ooh. you go. Okay. You got me there. Aha! Yes, uh, Ra Raikou is uh, how, uh, how like, the Indians would uh, fire a pot. They would just uh, make, a, make a fire and get the coals, the uh, embers going, and then uh, just set it down in the earth. It's sort of, sort of like uh, cooking a pig in the ground. Okay, so they, uh, I, I've seen that in, uh, in uh, India, actually, where they, uh, they take the mud ware and they bury it in the ground and with hot coals. Yeah, okay. They call that the Raikou method there. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Thank All you. right. And uh, Raikouder, <laughs> good singer-songwriter. There you go. All right, Ben. Hey, good times, everybody. Whoo! <laughs> See, my 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 ceramic brethren. Uh, by the way, who said um, my uh, ceramic major in high school would not pay great great dividends one day? Nothing you learn is useless. Slab pots, coil pots. Come on. You think chicks can resist that kind of talk? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm wet. 1985. I got a nice big goose egg up uh, for the <laughs> earnings number, and I'm talking about Raikou. Couple of chicks. Yeah, Jay. Gentlemen, you're 30. What's up? Greetings. Love, love the show. Thanks, Jay. Love, love you. Oh yeah. Hey, I got a theory. I'm getting. Uh, I'll be honest with you, there, there, Adam. Uh, I, uh, I enjoy your your show. You're a funny guy, but I'm getting damn tired of of listening to you always talking about wanting to kill people all the time for various reasons, most of which are really good. Uh, Mm -hmm. I guess my pr right. I guess my problem is, is that uh, you know you're missing the boat. I know that eventually you're going to rule the planet. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day. Yes. Yeah. I uh, I think you've got a community here that could help you out, and I want to offer our services because I too have a theory. You're always talking about I, like a week ago you said something about uh, shooting people when they apply for their welfare and stuff. You just show up at the house with your with your silenced pistol, and when you ask them to sign the papers, you just drill them. Yeah, yeah I, like I, I, I don't think that was just applying for welfare, though. It had something to do with state assistance. You know, you, you, you require an interview or something, and then when you show up at the house, instead of giving him the state assistance, you just give him a lead sandwich. 
Yeah. Uh, this was this was the disability thing. This was Maybe back what, injuries. Yeah. We're, we're getting into that area. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was not not quite not not quite a, a simple uh, maiming would uh, suffice for uh, some of these other things. But anyway, yeah, but, but go ahead, Jay. Right. Well, my my theory is that a lot of the people who you know apply for the disability or apply for state assistance erroneously or who are scamming the system are also customers of ours. And so I think in order to to help facilitate, you're people, you're in law enforcement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why not just open up a hunting season 24 hours a year for us? I mean, we're fully equipped for the cops. Sure. Why not? You know, like one felony conviction or three misdemeanors, and you're you're you're. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, I got no problem with that, Jay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All those people are on assistance. Yeah, you do what you got to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The law of the streets. Law of the streets. Take, take a finger, you know. Guy yeah. who gets the most kills or whatever gets a trophy. Yeah. What, uh, what you, uh, you work in the street or are you behind a desk? Where are you? Um, no, I'm on the street. You're on the street. That's, right. That's, that's my man. Right. I walk among you. All right. All right, Jay. But I don't walk. I don't write jaywalking tickets. Yeah. Yeah, you don't do any of that chicken ass stuff. That's right. You do the real uh, law enforcement, and you look the other way on consensual crimes like uh, prostitution and a guy dealing a dime bag, right, Jay? Not really. Oh, all right. Sadly, no. All right. Well, listen, don't shoot anybody. No, not tonight. No, but I'll give you a list uh, one day when I'm in charge. Who to shoot? Yeah. You need to go after him. Jay certainly seems like he's anxious to comply. Yeah. Well, you know, you know my theory about cops. I, I, it's ringing in my head now. Currently, <laughs> they could have easily gone the other way, and some of them actually did. While, uh, while uh, wearing the shield. All right, Crystal. Hello. You're 18. Yeah. Hi. Um, oh. Adam, I love you. Love you, baby. But we got to take a, a quick break. All right. Fine. All right. So, uh, Drew, what's Crystal's problem? She's dating a 38-year-old she met online. All right. Bad we'll, times. We'll get into that after this. Hey, yo, love line, man. I'm the Jews. Love line, love line, love line, love line, love line, love line. Uh, that that? Dan Zavalop. Who is your guest tomorrow night, huh? Now, Tay was coming up. 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 Who? Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson. From? He's that country singer. No, he's the guy from American Idol. American Idol. Randy Jackson from American Idol's coming in here tomorrow night. All right. We'll uh, talk to him tomorrow night. And, uh, Crystal? Yeah, hi. All right. Um, okay, Adam, I love you, and Drew, I just want to tell you you inspire me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks. Okay, um, I, a friend of mine and I, about two weeks ago, or three oh, weeks ago. Oh, smoke alarm. Yep. Decided that. Crystal, hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right. Last time I called in, you guys did this too. That we heard that we listened to your smoke alarms. Uh-huh. And we and gave you endless crap about it. Yeah. And you didn't change the batteries. It's not my house. <laughs> How long ago was this? Uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. Do you live there? Uh, no, I don't. I'm a nanny. <laughs> ah. Um. So, anyways, um. Who says nanny? So he can't change their smoke alarm. Hold on, it's getting ready to go off again soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's just all be quiet. They usually go every 33, 38. I think they go minute 30. No. Hmm? Okay. All right, let's just listen. Okay. Go ahead, Crystal. Talk quietly so we can hear the smoke alarm. Yeah, oh. there it was. There it goes. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. About 50 um, a friend and I, as a joke, we decided to do this online dating thing, and... um. Just kind of a joke to see how many responses we get from our ads. And um, this guy uh, actually uh, responded, and I didn't expect anything of it, but I started talking back and forth with him, and we ended up meeting. And um, at first, I didn't really find him that attractive, but the more I got to know about him, I guess I kind of did. And I just feel a little dysfunctional about it, although I am really into him. And He's 20 years, more than twice your age. Uh huh. I understand how you could be... Have a relationship. Are you, are you having sex? Mm-hmm. Oh, hold on one second, okay? Yeah. It's coming. There, there it is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Um, I just feel like I feel dysfunctional because um, I just think that, yeah, there's an age difference, but 
I am into him, and I just get this horrible feeling from him that... Because he says things like, well, we're just friends right now, and we'll see what happens. No, but he's yeah. having sex with so you, he's right? Just, he's, he's found an 18-year-old who's willing to let him have sex with you, him. Uh-huh. Right. And that's it, period. That's the end of the story. Uh-huh. I mean, met her on the web. I mean, this guy that just... That guy's a jackass. Yeah. What's he do? Uh, he owns his own company. Uh, doing what? Weddings. 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 Oh. He's gay, too. Uh, that's what I thought at first, but... Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Actually, he kind of reassured me that he's not, I hope. He could be married, for all you know. He's not. I've been to his house. I've seen some of his assets. Hold on. There it is. Okay. All right. Yeah, listen, you're nannying for these people. Don't you think in behalf of those children, you got to climb up there and change the batteries? Um, I, you know what? That's a really good idea. It does bug me. Yeah. 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 And not, I evidently not that much, because you called two weeks ago, and it was going off. I called like a couple months ago. <laughs> um, a couple months ago, and it was going off. And what she about said, the jacket? You said, said two, two weeks. weeks, didn't you? Yes, she did. But I didn't call you two weeks ago. It's just been like two weeks, three weeks since I've been seeing him. No, you told us we were hassling you two weeks ago about no, the smoke I, alarms. I, I didn't say two weeks ago. I think you guys got confused. I, I, I didn't mean two weeks ago. A couple months ago, okay. you guys All right, Man, that, that makes it worse. And what about the idiots who own that house? <sighs> they can afford nannies. They're worried about the kids. They, eh. I, you know what? I can't answer that for you. I just, where is that smoke detector? It's in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And where are you? In the living room. In the living room. You can hear it. There oh, it is. Oh I'm my sorry. God. Oh my God. I don't. I, I get on that. I'll uh, just uh, listen. That. No, you tell the owner. Is there a male around there? <laughs> no, it's a single parent. Ooh. It's a chick. Yeah. No, oh. this is what happens when women try to <laughs> run things. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. What she yeah. do? It's bartender. Ooh. All right. So she's an idiot. <laughs> this is a place. It's an idiot. I mean, look. That's a reptile. <laughs> she's got an iguana brain. Should I, should, well, should I get out of this? I, I yes, know, get like, out. I'm thinking maybe it'll like, lead to something, but I know Like that what, a, ma- a wedding? Are you going to marry this guy? Uh, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, no, too early. No, too no, early. right now. I would, I like him. Um, I think if he probably asked me like next week, I might say yes. He seems really secure in his life. That is very attractive to me. He seems very intelligent. Hold on. Okay. Thank sure, you. you ever get tired of being wrong? Uh, Honestly, I just kind of crave the, um, he's very stable, it seems like. Yeah, okay, well, he's an idiot, so. Eight, 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 38, when you're, when you're 25 and look at the guys dating 18 year olds, you'll flip out. There's nothing wrong with you, Crystal. Okay. Just find a decent 23-year-old guy. No way this guy's getting married. The okay. guy that's surfing the internet for 18-year-olds, no way he's getting married. And look. And, and if he is, you know, you'll be hating life if you marry this guy. Listen. We, it, listen, ladies. The guys give this rap. You know, hey, just having a good time. Hey, just hey, look, think of you as a we'll great friend. We'll see what friend. happens. Think of you as a great friend. Yeah. Think of you as a great friend. And then... I'll put her back up so we hear the smoke. Alarm. No. No. That's eight times. Not enough? Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Never Christ. gets old. Never gets old. What kind of colossal tard lives in a house where you can hear the goddamn smoke detector chirping every 51 <laughs> seconds? Three rooms away. For months. Oh, my God. Oh, you, you can't, there's, there's, you just can't convince me. Here's the deal. Here are the two choices with that person. Deaf. Okay, three choices. Deaf, uh, just flat out, just really have a reptile brain. Retard, retarded, yeah. Retidal, re, re, reptile, reptilian retard brain, or super genius. <laughs> 300 IQ. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, but so exquisitely yeah. focused on stuff, you know, like Einstein, yeah. hair's a mess, wearing the same suit every day. Yeah. So deep in Wears thought. Wears shoes on the wrong feet. And so, so deep yeah. in thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, which one do you think it is? Deaf. Huh? Retard. Yeah. Thank you. Christine? Hi. You're 19. What's up? Um, a few weeks ago, my boyfriend started getting a cold sore, yeah. and he wouldn't go down on me because he was afraid that it would cause me to get like herpes he is a smart man that's how herpes is passed along it is yep okay i just was checking because i didn't know if it was the same thing you can always use a dental dam although even then you oh, shouldn't yeah. do it because even taking the latex berry and laying it down there you could you know it's not 100 percent. i i got out of oral sex the same way you you, you learned how to do the no you i went would, to a hollywood makeup class to no, I just use soldering iron. Oh, just burn yourself. Just right on the upper lip. It's, 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 it
while you're moving around. Just go to makeup class. You get a nice big cold sore you paint on. Yeah, that can peel off, and sometimes you don't know you're wiping your nose and it's on your hand, and then you're in front of the old lady. You take a soldering iron, just just one, just quick, just like when Kung Fu branded the inside of his wrist. You know, just just pow. Yeah. Brian, explain that one to uh, Lauren, by the way, the Kung Fu reference text. Mm-hmm. And and just... just p- She's watching TV. Just pow, right there. All right, Christine. Perfect. Right. Good times. And right, one more call, Drew. Who's been on hold the longest? Uh, uh, that one. Uh, okay. Uh, this one. Uh, uh-huh. uh-huh. Michael? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah, hi. Um, How uh, do you approach uh, your real dad? Yeah. You never met him? No. Uh, were you up for adoption or something? No, the funny thing is that uh, my mom actually told me about this when I was 15. Mm-hmm. And, um, do you have somebody you call dad? Mm, yeah. No, uh, leave it alone. Who yeah. is that? I, I don't know, because, like, right now I'm just, like, to the point where I, you know, don't know where I am in life. And well, it's like, not his fault. Do you have a stepdad? Yeah. And do you get along with him? Not at all. Ooh. Not at all. Well, all right, well, it's payback time. we got to find real dad. Yeah. And Well, the well, fantasy is real dad's going to be this wonderful and guy. And why, why is not, real dad? Not necessarily, just, um, <laughs> I think, to ease my curiosity about it. Is yeah. Well, I, listen, I there's something there. Does he live in the town you live in? No, he lives in uh, Florida. Mm. I, have you, oh, Bad Florida. Sign. Bad Shocking. sign. Yeah. Shocking, he's in Florida. And have you spoken to him? Um, no, I... I I'm like two steps away from getting his uh, phone number, but I don't know uh, what the right way to... Can you confide in your mom about this? Yeah. I would do that. Uh, and send, and him, send him a letter and email something first, see if he responds. And, and just because you're not getting along great with Step Pop doesn't mean you need to go search oh, out uh, real deadbeat, no. uh, doesn't love you, alcoholic, Floridian, Floridian uh, working in a Waffle House pop. Yeah. Talk to mom, see what she says. Yeah. We'll be back. That song. All right. Should we take a little uh, extended break here, Drew? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Randy Jackson tomorrow night from uh, American Idol, which I saw tonight. So oh. uh, I'm going to recognize him when he comes in. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Hello, I'm Lucius. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Osama Bilabin. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.